Hello, I'm Dr. Barbara Warren. I'm the Senior Director for Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Programs and Policies in the Mount Sinai Health Systems Office for Diversity and Inclusion. I'm also an Assistant Professor for Medical Education at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I think one of the biggest challenges for the LGB and transgender diverse community, which is how we are now um, referring uh, to folks, um, is finding a provider and finding a health system that is LGBTQ, both clinically and culturally competent, and being able to basically go anywhere in that system to any provider, to any setting, and feel safe, feel that you are being treated both effectively and with compassion. And this is something that we at Mount Sinai have really uh, taken lots of strides to, to make possible throughout our entire healthcare system. Well, I think there are two things that LGBTQ plus patients really need to look for. The first is understanding that being lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and, trans and gender diverse isn't necessarily a health problem uh, in itself, but that many LGBTQ people have health issues that are related to something we call minority stress. Minority stress is any kind of stress that people can undergo that affects us both psychologically and also affects us physiologically when we either have experienced or even anticipate experiencing discrimination, bullying, or even violence. And this is something that many people in the LGBTQ plus community live with, even if they themselves have had not had personal experiences, they know that there is a possibility of discrimination um, and of uh, even misunderstanding by healthcare providers. And this can create anxiety. The anxiety in itself, when it's sustained over time, can create all kinds of health problems and not just psychological or health behavior issues. Sometimes if you're overstressed, you can eat too much or drink too much um, or not take care of yourself. There's also a physiological response to what we call minority stress, where you can have increased levels of sustained cortisol in your body and you can be triggered by that. And that can lead to other health disparities such as cardiovascular risk or, or risk for other uh, health behaviors. So for many LGBTQ people, this is an added risk. And you want your provider not just to be treating you for your presenting problem or an acute condition, but to also have an idea of what wellness is and what kinds of supports that you will need as an LGBTQ person um, to promote wellness, to promote prevention. You want them to know the right questions to ask. Um, and you want to be able to be referred to other providers if you need subspecialty care that are also LGBTQ culturally and clinically competent. There are some special health issues that people have in the LGBTQ community. Some of them are related to sexual practice. Some of them are related to minority stress. Some of them are related for transgender and, tra and gender diverse people to issues around a medical transition, such as hormones or uh, uh, surgery that uh, trans and gender diverse people uh, may be looking for. So there is a clinical competence issue also that your provider needs to have, but most primary care providers can treat LGBTQ people without any problem, but the wellness and the prevention aspect, particularly when it comes to the special stress and stressors that LGBTQ people might face in today's world is really important for your healthcare provider to know about. Well, for example, in the Mount Sinai Health System, we have a number of ways to find that. We have a great web page uh, that gives you all kinds of resources where you can see the kind of work that we're doing, the kind of resources we have in the Mount Sinai Health System. Um, it is our LGBT webpage in our Mount Sinai, at our Mount Sinai website. We also have directories of resources around the city and around the country that people can access uh, wherever you are. Um, also, you can go to the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association website, the World Professional for Trans World Professional Association for Transgender Health, and they all have referral guides. 
But within the Mount Sinai Health System, you can email us at LGBT info, LGBT in caps, I-N-F-O at mountsinai.org. And we will answer your email and make a direct referral to providers around the Mount Sinai Health System that have special expertise in LGBT health. That being said, at Mount Sinai, we take LGBT health and pride in your health very seriously. And we have ongoing training for all of our providers across our system, for all of our frontline workers, everybody from our security guards to our surgeons in creating a safe and welcoming environment for our LGBTQ patients, families, visitors, and employees. Well, uh, having a relationship with it, with a healthcare provider, um, depending on what you're presenting and what you're looking for, I think it's really important to find a primary care provider that's kind of your person that follows you, um, that you feel connected to, that you feel like you can bring your whole self. And that doesn't just include your sexual orientation and your gender identity. That also includes other aspects of you. Um, you know, what your race and ethnicity is, what language you speak, what your background is. Um, it's really important to be able to bring your full self and feel like your provider gets you, understands you, can work with you, is patient-centered, listens to you. And that's true for all patients, not just for LGBTQ uh, patients. So I think that's really important. Sometimes you'll go and look for the best person. You know, you'll go look like, for example, if you needed a knee replacement, you want the absolute best, most experienced provider. Um, and sometimes um, that provider may, you know, be a nice person, but not really get, you know, what's being gay or lesbian or transgender have to do with knee replacement. But being patient centered, being compassionate, understanding, you know, if you have stress related to what's going on in your life, that's going to affect your healing, even from a knee replacement surgery is something that all of your providers should be able to have. And asking those questions and feeling comfortable and bringing your full self and in, in, you know, what, what is going on in your life to any provider that's treating you is really an indication of whether or not you're going to do well uh, in that particular healthcare situation. And again, at Mount Sinai, we really, in the training that we do with everyone, we really stress that it's not just about the condition the person is presenting, it's the whole package. It's how the health system uh, is welcoming. It's how you can interact with the front desk staff. It's how billing will answer your questions. It's understanding that we all live in a world that's full, particularly now with, with stressors and, and with anxiety. And particularly when you come into a healthcare situation, you, you oftentimes are coming in with an acute issue and you already are anxious and you already are concerned and knowing that you're not going to have to deal with somebody else's bias or somebody else's misunderstanding about who you are and what you're bringing um, and, and not add to that stress is also going to be really important. Um, so again, you know, sometimes it's trial and error. Again, we have gone to great lengths in the Mount Sinai Health System to make sure that everyone in our system um, is equipped with the tools and the resources, the knowledge, the compassion, and the desire to give the best possible patient experience to all of our patients and their families, including our LGBTQ plus patients and their families. Well, again, I'm going to emphasize any door you walk through as a patient in Mount Sinai, whatever that door is, should be a welcoming and affirmative environment for LGBTQ people. That being said, we have a number of programs and a number of practitioners that do specialize in certain aspects of LGBT health. For example, our Institute for Advanced Medicine, which used to be originally started out as our HIV AIDS program. So we had a large uh, gay and bisexual population uh, in those programs. Now is a program where we specialize in some of the health care issues that are facing LGBTQ people. It's not the only place you can go, um, but there are some special services there, including um, that's a place where if you're living with HIV or you are feeling that HIV is a health risk for you, um, there's a specialization in the Institute for Advanced Medicine. And we have five IM clinics throughout the Mount Sinai healthcare system in different parts of the system across the city and in the boroughs. Uh, the other special program that we have is a national model. It's our Center for Transgender Medicine and Surgery. Again, if you're trans or gender diverse, it, it's not the place, it's not the default for you. 
Um, it's a center for excellence. We do many things there. We have lots of training, education, advocacy that comes out of CTMS, as we call it. But it's also a one-stop shop if you are a trans or gender diverse person who is interested in, in or w- interested in or wants to undergo uh, a medical uh, a gender uh, affirmation procedure. And, and there, there's many services there that will allow you um, to undergo those procedures and to have smooth sailing through it and to be supported through the process.